You're listening to Insight here on Cap Radio. I'm your host, Vicki Gonzalez. California is making its way towards going green. The latest data by the state shows that almost a fifth of cars sold in 2022 were zero emission vehicles. In fact, our state is home to 40 percent of all electric vehicle sales in the country. So it's no wonder that a major international electric car semiconductor manufacturer would choose California to expand production. And the city of Roseville is where it will happen if a major deal announced last week is approved by federal regulators. The tech company is Bosch and it's based in Germany. It announced that it's buying Roseville's TSI semiconductors and will invest $1.5 billion into upgrading its facility and training its existing workforce. Bosch, as we're going to learn, makes essential chips that electric vehicles use to charge and recharge their batteries. And this, of course, is exciting news for Roseville, which continues to be one of the fastest growing cities in California. We're excited to have Roseville's Economic Development Director, Melissa Aguiano, to talk about what this means. And we also welcome Paul Thomas with Mobility Solutions for the Americas at Bosch to talk about why Roseville. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Paul, I want to start with you and let's lead with Bosch because the logo may be familiar to some and so is the name. But what does Bosch make and how do your products touch really our everyday lives? We may not think of semiconductors on a daily basis if we don't if we don't work in the industry that you work in. Yeah, no, that's a great, great question. Um, Thank you for having me. First and foremost, Vicky, it's a pleasure to to join you both um, on this call today. Um, Bosch is a, a rather large company with multinational um, types of products that we deliver. We work uh, primarily in the automotive industry, but we also have products that are in um, home appliances. Um, we also provide power tools um, into the market along with various heating and cooling solutions um, throughout the world. Um, automotive, though, is the area that we're, we're really concentrating on with this um, pursuit um, into TSI. And hopefully, you know, the semiconductors that we'll be making there uh, will make their way into automotive applications throughout the world. Mm. You know, given that you are part of the mobility industry, what exactly is the mobility industry? So, um, you know, the mobility industry in its simplest terms could have been defined a few years ago as just if you made a car (laughs) that would be considered the automotive industry. But as we move into the mobility industry, we're looking at a broader sense of um, moving people and goods around the world. And to move people and goods around the world, you need different various levels of mobility concepts, which could um, revolve around the electrification of the automobile, the connection of services and people to different um, technologies throughout the world, and also making it more easy and frictionless uh, for people to get around um, in a way that's more convenient and is better for um, CO2 consumption and better for the lives of people, right? So. Mobility is really grasping at all of that, um, making it easier, making it better for life, and ensuring that we're um, taking the environment into consideration as well. And the reason why we're having this conversation is because this involves electric vehicles. So what do these chips do that will be eventually made in Roseville? Yeah, so the chips that we, we hope to make in Roseville will be the chips that are used in electric vehicles in the conversion of power um, in its simplest forms. And you need um, a very um, specific manufacturing facility to make these chips, which we call silicon carbide. And uh, the facility um, in Roseville provides us with a very good base um, and a very good opportunity to start from a location that has tremendous amount of um, great labor in place today, along with a lot of experts. And um, also a very good relationship with the local um, utilities and the local government that helps us um, look at this and say, you know, we can make silicon carbide chips and put them into electric vehicles or vehicles that um, need to convert power um, in different ways. And um, the silicon carbide makes that a much more efficient system so that your electric vehicle can have more range, can have more functionality. And of course, then you reduce the amount of energy that you consume to get from point A to point B. Okay. Well, when Bosch announced that it's buying Roseville's TSI semiconductors, that means that the the infrastructure is there, right? And it's going to be upgraded to Bosch's liking, you know, if, if this deal goes through. I understand the details of the deal were not made public, but what made TSI semiconductors, this facility, 
interesting for an investment for your company. Yeah, I mean, the location, you know, in Roseville has been um, around since 1954. And when we look at what TSI has done, they've built up, you know, vast expertise in semiconductor production throughout the years. You know, we want to integrate the expertise that TSI has already into our Bosch manufacturing network. And uh, this California facility at the moment will offer over 10,000 square feet of clean room space. And, um, you know, as we look at the market, the demand for semiconductors uh, will continue to increase. And uh, we believe that the market will grow by over 30% per year. And by doing this, um, this planned acquisition, of course, we will need to invest, as you mentioned, Vicki, around $1.5 billion to retool the facility to produce this next generation of silicon carbide technology. Mm. Okay, Melissa, that brings me to you because you're with the city of Roseville, right? So I would imagine when you get a call hearing that a major international tech company is going to invest a billion and a half dollars in your community, um, the reaction is probably good. Absolutely. Well, first, thank you for having me this morning. Um, it's great to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, TSI has been a longstanding um, valued partner in our business community. So we were really excited when we heard of Bosch's interest in continuing that partnership and their interest in potentially expanding that site. Hmm. When it comes down to $1.5 billion, that's pretty hard to visualize. But how does this investment ultimately trickle down or have a domino effect on surrounding communities? Well, one of our main roles in economic development is to really support the growth in prominent industry sectors, and primarily in those tradable sectors, those sectors that bring outside dollars. They sell goods and services outside of our region and bring new dollars in. Um, This certainly is one of those areas uh, we have listed in our economic development strategic plan as an area of opportunity for us to focus on. And so we do know and we hope and anticipate that this type of investment comes with an increased amount of jobs, increased sales and property tax as it relates to the investments in the property, uh, interest from other you know, businesses and uh, industries that uh, that are, re- are relatable in this cluster activity. Uh, those are the types of things we see. And you're correct that economic development really doesn't just happen at a local level. It really happens at a regional level. And so we see this as a real big win for the entire region. Right. Because it's not like just, you know, things that happen in Roseville just stay in Roseville, right? Correct. When it comes to the city, it's one of the fastest growing cities in the state. So what is it about Roseville that makes it a lucrative area, an interesting area for not only residents, but companies like Bosch to want to invest in the city? Yeah, we have been one of the fastest growing cities in California. We've had a great advantage of being one of those cities. Um, One of the the things about Roseville is we're a full service city. We own and operate and all of our utilities, electric, uh, water, stormwater, drainage, all of that. And gas, too? And not gas. Okay, That's the one right. thing we don't. Um, but it gives us a little bit of an advantage. One, we're able to, prov- not from a utility side, we're able to provide not only uh, affordable utilities as, as a publicly owned utility um, entity, but also reliable utilities, which we know is increasingly important um, these days as it relates to power outages and rollouts. And so we, we provide affordable and reliable utilities. We also um, have invested in our infrastructure to be able to provide the utility demands that are needed. Um, on the service side, as a full service city, we're really able to, you know, businesses and investors alike want one thing, consistency and certainty. And from um, a process standpoint, as a full service city, we're able to offer that because we're able to keep and control most of the processes in house. Mm-hmm. Paul, when it comes to Bosch, I mean, you want to be up and running in Roseville in about three years, uh, $1.5 billion investment. How Im- ambitious is that in the semiconductor industry? Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the reasons why we, we really were excited um, about this site was first, you um, to ramp up a new site, let's say in a greenfield location, um, may have taken us a lot longer and had um, a much more inherent risk. When we looked at the team um, in Roseville and the facility, first, the team has lots of energy and there there's lots of experts at the location. And, you know, they just really enjoy um, working in Roseville and they enjoy what they've done over the past 10 to 15 years. And if you look at the tenure of some of the, the best associates, um, there's really good people there. 
and you can't find that um, that often when you when you move to a location that will let's say be a greenfield spot. The other thing is um, when you look at the expertise in place and as the equipment that we will be putting into the facility, um, you need that base of um, know-how. And um, if you do that without the base of know-how, there's inherent risks, of course. And because the market is growing so fast and we don't want to be behind, um, this was a very, very um, advantageous way for us to potentially enter the market faster. Hmm. So um, it may take us three years, like you mentioned, in 2026 is when we want to make our first deliveries um, out of the facility. Um, and there were inherent risks um, about doing it in a greenfield location that that uh, the Roseville TSI location um, met um, more of our requirements. What happens in the meantime with this existing location? Does it pause what it's doing or can it continue to operate? Yeah, I mean, it's going to continue to operate, of course. Um, we have, They have existing customers. They have existing things that they need to to maintain um, that the, the management team there will will continue to support us as well as we begin making the um, uh, renovations that we need to do to be ready uh, for silicon carbide in 2026. Hmm. You know, there's also investment and incentives from the state as well as the federal government. Last year, the Biden administration passed the Chips and Science Act, and that essentially offers tax breaks and other incentives for semiconductor companies like Bosch so that manufacturing can happen here in the United States. What role did the Chips Act play in Bosch's decision to invest in the United States and ultimately in Roseville? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, we, we're looking forward to closing this deal here soon, right? We're still we're still in the process of closing it. But I will tell you that um, government funding, uh, the Chips and Science Act and California competes is very important for us. Um, the full scope of our investment, you know, is heavily dependent um, on federal and state funding opportunities, um, including chips. So um, this is a way for us to, um, again, add necessary global capacity um, in um, silicon carbide to take advantage of um, existing workforce and uh, a great location and also, you know, try to um, take it, I won't use the word take advantage, but but use the um, government um, and federal um, topics that we have available to us. You're listening to Insight here on CAP Radio. And if you're just joining us, we're talking about the high tech jobs that are coming to Roseville with the announcement that the semiconductor manufacturer Bosch is planning to invest $1.5 billion here. Melissa Aguiano is with the city of Roseville and Paul Thomas is with Bosch. Okay, Melissa, we know that this deal was the result of a collaboration (coughs) between Roseville, but also areas outside of Roseville. There are important groups like the Greater Sacramento Economic Council. They work tirelessly to lower businesses to our area. So talk about that relationship and how it really helped get this deal to the finish line. I mentioned earlier, um, you know, economic development really happens at a regional level. Greater Sacramento Economic Council has been a real instrumental partner in bringing uh, all of the cities and counties in the six county region together to really push forward and elevate uh, s- the Sacramento region as a place to do business. And so we work hand in hand with our partners at GSEC. We work hand in hand with our partners at their educational institutions, higher education. Um, higher in, uh, education institutions, as well as our workforce development partners. It really is a collaborative effort where we're really highlighting pr- and promoting kind of our best value propositions as a region and what we can bring to the table to help our businesses succeed. Yeah, you bring up a really important mm-hmm. point when it comes down to higher education, because mm-hmm. we're talking about tech jobs, right? Mm-hmm. And there are two, uh, well, there are multiple universities in our area. How is Roseville working with local universities to keep local talent local <laughs> and not getting stolen <laughs> from, from, yes. from other cities that also yeah. want to develop their economies as well? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think that is the uh, that is the key win out of economic development. If you can keep your talent and your labor here and there are opportunities for people to work and live in the region that is that is the prime opportunity and we're striving for um, we are we work um, hand in hand with not only the universities but as I mentioned our workforce development partners we um, but the key piece is bringing our
our industry partners. And, and that's another area where GSEC has been instrumental in not only bringing the um, public uh, municipalities together, but also bringing industry partners to the table. We recently launched a talent pipeline management program with our uh, Roseville Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's a it's a workforce development program through the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, Foundation. And it's really an industry-led initiative focused on ensuring that uh, the industries are aligned in their workforce development efforts, but that also that the uh, workforce development partners, the training and skilled institutions, as well as the universities and educational facilities are also aligned with what our workforce um, partners need and what our industry leaders are looking for from a work, from a training and skills perspective. I brought up the CHIPS Act to Paul, mm-hmm. um, and that's obviously <coughs> an understandable incentive for, for businesses to invest in, in the U.S. And, and in California. How does cities like Roseville look to capitalize on something like the CHIPS Act? Well, we do know from what we understand and what we how it's written currently, we do know that the CHIPS Act will require uh, a significant level of local participation um, and uh, and leverage as it relates to a competitive application for Bosch. And so we are prepared and looking at exploring opportunities at how we are how we may be able to contribute to, to uh, that application process to ensure Bosch is successful in their application. That may include that is going to include a very collaborative effort not only with the city but with our partners at the county with GSEC with the universities and again our workforce development partners. Yeah, and we haven't essential we haven't really crossed the finish line yet, right? Because we still need to get that approved by federal regulators. So Paul, what are the next steps in this process? Yeah, I think you know the, the next steps in the process really are to follow follow through with the federal regulators, make sure we get um, into that process. Also, you know, staying real close with the TSI uh, leadership team. Um, um, that is in place and make sure that um, everything, you know, stays um, stays as they want it to be. But I think we, we've got to wait and see what happens um, along those lines related to the approval. Mm. Um, you know, I did want to I did want to comment on one thing related to the community. Um, one thing about Bosch is, you know, we're an organization that when we're in a community, we also like to live in the community um, the way that we do it. We will. Um, we see Roseville as a good match for the way that we um, um, handle associates, the way that we um, deal with direct labor and what we do with apprentice programs and partnerships with local schools and universities. So we see lots of opportunities as well based upon um, what Melissa had said that um, we will also be engaged um, in the community if we are in the community. You know, and there's a larger conversation taking place in the state when it comes to just climate initiatives, which are pretty ambitious. Paul, given that you have your finger on the pulse of green mobility, we started this segment with the latest numbers showing California buys, I think, 40 percent of all ZEVs. Those are zero emission vehicles in the country. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to California's ZEV market, specifically even maybe northern California, I mean, you're you're choosing to invest in Roseville, which is good. But what are some of the challenges that remain with it with increasing those numbers in the coming years? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the increase of of electrified mobility um, in the region that we live in, right, there's there's multiple different challenges. One, of course, is the supply chain. Um, related to can you make enough batteries? Can you localize the materials? Um, that, that's probably the first and foremost um, problem. And then you have to look at the infrastructure. Um, how does the public charge their vehicle? Um, is the grid strong enough? Um, is there energy available? And then there'll also be discussions about what technology um, is necessary to achieve ZEV or to achieve a zero emission type vehicle. Is it full battery electric? Is it some level of plug-in hybrid. So, you know, Vicki, there, there's lots of challenges. Um, first and foremost, we have to find the most efficient way and economical way to build the vehicles because if people can't afford them, um, we they won't buy them. And then once you're able to um, produce the vehicle at a reasonable scale and uh, price point, then you have to be able to have the infrastructure and the ability to charge them. And um, electromobility is coming. Um, you know, Bosch um, participates in both the electromobility And we also um, participate heavily in the conventional um, ICE engine. And we're balancing um, both of those technologies in the best way to continue to developing both of them to be better for the environment, whether you're running a gasoline engine or whether you're running an electric machine, 
um, we want them both um, to be the best possible for the environment. Finally, Melissa, since uh, last week's announcement, has your phone been ringing a bit more? M- more emails? <laughs> Absolutely. It's always great to make national news for great reasons. Well, Melissa and Paul, thank you so much for the conversation. It was really interesting. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Thank Melissa. you, Paul. <laughs> and that is Melissa Aguiano, the Economic Development Director for the City of Roseville. And Paul Thomas is the Executive Vice President of Mobility Solutions for the Americas at Bosch.